Well, hello boys and girls, and welcome to a brand new video. Now this car here, this wonderful blue beast of a machine, it has an issue uh, that the owner has noticed, and um, we will try to do something about it. Now what is the issue? This part right here, you see someone who is performing the polishing work before us uh, has done a poor job, meaning they managed to overheat or misuse uh, the polishing machine or the polisher and they put too much heat in the clear coat. This is uh, usually happens on the plastic bits of the car and we'll try to do something about it, save it, but I don't know if we will be able to because as you can see the clear coat here is completely distorted. But yeah, we'll try to see and um, let's see if we can actually save this. Yeah, so hold tight and let's see what we can do about this, um, this major, major issue on an expensive vehicle like this. So, let's see this place one more time, this, this piece of um, artwork left behind by an artist that's not me. Yeah, I'll just use my trusty test lamp here. You can see that the amount of damage here is quite significant. And um, yeah, for this job, well, it's going to be difficult, but I'm going to start with my Mirka mini file. This is a famous tool I use, or well, at least famous to me. And um, I'll try to even the unevenness using the Mirka mini file. And hopefully we will get a satisfying result. But after that, I will move to the Kovacs dry sanding papers, as well as this, uh, this Kovacs cube, which is actually used uh, in tandem with the papers, so the papers are stuck to the cube, and then you use those two in tandem to sand down the rest. Now, let me start with uh, removing my Mirka mini file tool. I have to say, this is one of my favorite tools, it's really proven to be very excellent. Of course, I will not use the handle, so I'll remove it from the handle and I'll use the finely ribbed side, okay? So the fine one, not the coarse. If you've used it before, then you might want to clean it before usage. So you take this, uh, I use this metal um, scraper, to, um, it's from Rupes, and I scrape off the remainder of paint or whatever mess there was on the previous vehicle that I was doing a job on. And now we can slowly start. So this is the area, a damaged area. Remember again, fine side and do not apply pressure gently with sensibility. Start slowly scraping away at the damaged area. So no pressure, boys and girls. Two fingers, if possible. Now I'm leaving this segment unsped up. I want you to see that there's actual amount of time that you have to put into this process because you're not using any force whatsoever. Remember, if you press, you will damage the surrounding. But as you can see here, I am facilitating my um, scraping process on the damage itself and depending on how careful and how much uh, patience you have, you might be able to save this part uh, from getting it fully resprayed. Okay, so let's just uh, keep going. As you can see, the sides are clear. I haven't scraped or scratched anything beyond the excess that has been caused by the previous polishing artist. I must say, I am pretty awesome compared to this guy. Yeah, look at this. So we'll continue scraping, boys and girls, until 
we feel no resistance under the scraper, right? When you feel no actual resistance that the scraper is not doing anything, then you can stop. But until then, try to get off as much as you can. I think I, think I kind of got to that here. I'm not gonna be using this. So let's move on to our um, favorite tools, the, the Kovacs papers. Now, we'll start off with something very fine grit, like, um, let's say a 3000 grit. Yeah, here we go. So the Tollcut Kovax 3000, which uh, we will use in conjunction with the Kovax cube. I guess the S lettering on the cube means it's a sports line cube. I'm not sure, but this cube is a miracle. So what you need to do, is stick the paper to the cube. We will have to use the narrow part because the scratch is on a dent, not, not on a flat surface. So we will stick it like so, so it can um, bend on the side slightly. Now, let's start with the 3000 grit. If we do not manage to remove significant amounts, we will move down to 2500 grit, 2000 grit, etc. Again, we're just continuing with slow motions, with very light touch. I mean, since you're already here and you can see how awesome I am, why don't you hit that like button? It will only take a second. I promise you, we still have about five minutes to go. So, let's see what we got after a little bit more of touchy-pushy. So here we go. You can still see how far the clear coat has been destroyed. We've managed to thin this area down a little bit, but I have to say this is located on a very bad spot right the car's damage is right here along the crease the bodywork crease so it's not on a completely flat surface and this makes everything a lot more difficult but we will press on i don't think we need to change the paper we'll stick with the 3000 grit it's doing a good job, but as you can see, it is very time consuming. So again, this is the crease. The crease is very tricky. If it was on a flat surface, this would be a lot easier to do. And to be honest with you, I've never done such a job before. At least not one located on such a spot where there's a crease. But since I am awesome, I believe I can do this no problem. So let me continue scraping away, plowing at the clear coat. Yeah, look at that. It's slowly disappearing. The white part in the middle, don't worry about that. That's just a um, sandpaper uh, residue that got caught in there. But the goal here is, remember, to try to save this um, bumper from a complete respray. Try to save the factory color on it. And thus, we will go through this process. We will try to fix others' problems. Let's see this even more clearly. Yeah, so again, this white part, this is just a residue from the sanding paper. Don't worry about that, that will come off when polishing. But just look at the rest, look at how damaged, how burnt the clear coat was. It doesn't look like anything from afar, but when you get close, yeah, it's not fun. So let's continue. Oh yeah, slowly but surely, co-wax. Oh, I got a little slip here, let me just put it back. Yeah, like so. Hey. 
Now, a significant time later, we're making slow progress, as you can see here. But don't worry, you will see the result before polishing. I think I might be able to show you now, maybe. I mean, okay, so the, 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 the lower part is pretty much almost flat. The upper one, <clears throat> yeah. Let's just continue, then I will degrease this part and I will show you the result before polishing. Again, look closely, there's a lot of damage to the clear coat. Thank you, the before artist. Thank you very much. But that's okay. My great skills, my Mirka Kovacs tools will be able to put this right. Scrap, 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 scrap. All right. So now let's um, let's degrease this part using my degreaser here. We have to clean the grease, the impurities. So the degreaser is a great way to go. <clears throat> Remember, this is before polishing. So let's see what we got. So you can still see that the paint is a little bit burnt. I did not remove the entire thing, but this is as comfortable as I am, knowing that there's still enough clear coat left to work with. So I won't go any deeper than this, okay? But now I will also show you what it all looks like after polishing. And this is the result after polishing. As you can see, the white line from the residue is gone. You can barely see anything was wrong here. You'd really have to look hard and long. But even then, I'm not sure that uh, you can notice that anything was actually damaged. Because I'm awesome. So, until next time, boys and girls, like, share, comment, subscribe, ringling the ringling ling bell button and um uh, yeah stay safe take care and uh goodbye boys and girls